crunch time for multi-million pound project as council tell developers get building or get out. It's very shabby um, and it uh, uh, is, uh, is damaging the centre of uh, Winchester. Storm Jonas caused chaos in America and now it's hitting our region. Bruised and battered, Basingstoke Bisons lose the first leg of semi-finals. Good evening, I'm Alice Wheatley. The long-running Silver Hill saga has taken a dramatic turn, with Winchester City Council planning to drop the developers from the regeneration project. The companies say that they would be unable to start building until a High Court decision is reached. Ross Perkins tries to get to the bottom of this complex dispute. It's the £150 million development on the cusp of a crisis. The Silver Hill scheme in Winchester has once again stalled, with the council now at a crucial crossroads. Council leader Stephen Godfrey told Winnell that work would begin around Christmas time. It's now almost February and not a single brick has been laid, with developers TH Real Estate stating it needs more time to change its proposals. The cabinet's response has been simple. Start building work now or face being dropped. On the 28th of January, the council will discuss the Cabinet's proposal and whether or not to support them. Speaking to Councillor Gottlieb, he is eager to see TH Real Estate given the boot. Uh, we have been told so many different stories by the developer as to whether the scheme is viable or not viable. It seems to change almost on a weekly basis. And then what I hope happens is that before the council then rushes into, you know, scrabbling around trying to find a, a solution or another developer, they take some time to get the scheme right, to think it through properly. Councillor Godfrey, who called Silver Hill a concrete jungle, is deeply frustrated at the lack of progress. It's very shabby. It uh, has been that way for uh, nearly 20 years. Um, and it uh, uh, is, uh, is damaging the centre of uh, Winchester. We need to um, redevelop. Um, so further delay is really most unwelcome. In a statement to Winnell, TH Real Estate says it would be unreasonable to drop the contracts during the appeal. We can understand both the leaders' and members' frustration, but we would have been halfway through construction by now had it not been for a councillor taking his own council to court. We are confident that we can gain enough out of the appeal process to allow a scheme to be started soon, after it has been decided that it is of the quality the city deserves. It was promised to improve the quality of retail, residential and public space in Silver Hill. But from what we know of the scheme so far, it looks like a long time before that promise from the council comes true. Ross Perkins, Winchester News Online. Hampshire residents are to pay an extra £3 a year for the police service from April. The county's police and crime commissioner, Simon Hayes, says the extra money will be used to support frontline policing. Tao Yishen reports. Hello sir, it's a routine check. Like all public service, the police in Hampshire and elsewhere have been hit by cuts in recent years. Last November, the Chancellor said the government would make no further cuts this year, but also said he expected the county's taxpayers to increase contribution. And now it has been decided how much extra the taxpayers will have to pay. Members of the police and crime panel have voted overwhelmingly in favour of an increase of just under 2%. It is challenging. Everybody's aware of the financial um, difficulties that local authorities are now facing following the um, government austerity measures which they're bringing in. But nevertheless, what I think we've done today is, is found the right balance um, and we've agreed it on the basis that Hampshire um, is getting good policing. During Christmas and early stages this year, more than 2,000 residents participated the public consultation conducted by the commissioner. Survey results shows nearly three quarters of the residents are willing to pay an increase of council tax for policing nearly 2%. This breaks down to £3.13 a year, 6p a week. This is for an average household. Residents responded to the survey wanted the money to be spent on more frontline policing. There will be more police officers, um, so we're not cutting the numbers. Um, we're able to put in 
uh, a, a new cybercrime uh, unit which will, with the support of uh, private business, will combat crime against business and also against, against members of the public. Although they suffered severe budget cuts from the government in the past years, this decision will help the police secure their funding starting the next financial year. This is Theo Yishin, Winchester News Online. Storm Jonas, which has caused mayhem in parts of America, moved over to the UK yesterday. Warranting a yellow weather warning from the Met Office. The storm brought with it strong winds and heavy rain for many parts of the country, with Winchester being just one of the areas that was issued the yellow warning. The city and surrounding areas have been subject to flooding, closed roads and the cancellation of Solent ferries. The storm could be a major setback for some of the UK still trying to recover from flooding over Christmas. A new £25 million sports centre is said to be the opportunity of a lifetime for students and residents in Winchester, according to the City Council. Reports say that the university is giving around £6 million to support the development in Bar End. Andrea Olsen has the details. Sports teams at the university are training in facilities that have not been refurbished since the 1970s. The next generation of students will be able to enjoy the new facilities in two or three years. The current on-campus facility, Bowers Building, will not receive investments, so funds can be directed to the new centre in Bar End. I think it's great that we've got plans for new sports facilities. Um, our sports hall really is outdated and um, we'd love the opportunity for um, our sports students to train in other places. So it'd be great for them to use um, facilities, whether it's more in the city or whether it's around campus, that kind of thing. So it'd be great for, for us as Team Winchester on the whole. We are limited for space on campus, so it would be great to have that kind of extended, expanded space down there um, in order to get more teams training in a, in a wider variety of sports. Councillors agreed the plans are a good move forward for the city's residents and students. The choices are either to re spend quite a lot of money refurbishing the, the one that we have already or go for this once in a lifetime opportunity of building a new leisure centre. With both parties and the university united in favour of this plan, Bar End is going to be the location of the new sports centre. Andrea Olsen, Winchester News Online. Part of Southampton city centre is currently closed due to sections of the Guildhall Square being dug up. The paving slabs on West Marlands Road are unstable because of the constant flow of vehicles. Work is now being done to prevent the problem occurring again and is expected to be completed by the end of February. Tough Mudder will not be taking place in Winchester for the foreseeable future, according to the Hampshire Chronicle. The organisers have pulled out of the event due to a planning permission issue at Matterley Estate where the event is held. Landowner Perveril Bruce is said to be battling to keep the event as well as popular festival Boomtown. And to carry on with the sports news in Hampshire, we hand over to Georgie Wingrove and the sports team. Thanks Alice. Basingstoke Bison were looking to gain the advantage in the first leg of their cup semi-final against Guildford Flames at the weekend. Matt Wilson has more. It was a fiery affair as Bison hosted the Flames fighting for a spot in the final with the English Premier League Cup. Both goaltenders were having saves to make throughout the whole game to keep their teams in it. Frustrations got the better of Guildford when Oslin swung his stick and caught Baston on the head. Guildford took their chance in the final third through Matt Toe, with a good finish past Baston. It was a close game and was very nearly a draw, but Guildford took the advantage from this first leg. Bison will be hoping their cup dreams haven't gone up in flames when they travel to Guildford tonight in the second leg of this semi-final. Matt Wilson, Winchester News Online, Basingstoke. AFC Totten stabilised their mid-table position with a comfortable win over Bridgewater Town. Matt Shepherd has the action from the Testwood Stadium. 
Eight points separated the two teams going into this bottom half of the table clash, with Tottenham hoping to pull a further 11 clear come full time. The first half was a rather ill-tempered affair, with Bridgewater's captain White lucky to only see a yellow for this challenge. The same could apply to Stags midfield and Mike Gosney, whose mistimed tackle warrants him a yellow as well. Though moments later, Gosney produced a moment of magic for Tottenham to fire them into a lead. His fierce low drive proved too much for the Bridgewater keeper who could only stand and watch. The Stags went into the half-time interval with a 1-0 lead, but it was evident that the Stags head coach, Steve Hollock, was rather frustrated with the officials. Early in the second half, Tottenham had a penalty appeal turned down. Though with a minute left on the clock, Tottenham did wrap up the three points after a cool finish from Nick Watts to make it 2-0 to the Stags. It was Watts' 11th goal of the season and what has been a brilliant campaign for him so far. So it was a much needed three points for Totten, who moved up to 11th. Um, like I say, clean sheet and, and two goals in the other end, it's always a good day's work. So. Yeah, you know, we've got a nice bit of confidence in the camp, so I think it was important that we got the, got the result today after, uh, after the little blip last weekend. So from our point of view, it's nice to, nice to get the win. Now over to rugby, where Winchester took on high-flying London Cornish in a crucial game for the home side. Hannah Quinn reports. Winchester were keen to set the record straight against London Cornish. And although Cornish registered the first points of the afternoon through a penalty, it was Winchester who really impressed in the first half, blowing Cornish away with two tries and a conversion. Their first try was particularly impressive, with some strong build-up play, allowing Campbell Ettinger to break forward to score. A fantastic conversion from Connor Breen gave Winchester a six-point lead going into the break. Yet Cornish came back fighting in the second half with a couple of tries, first seeing Chatley finishing off a great passing move, before Atkin also got the ball across the line. A Winchester penalty from Connor Breen pulled it back to 15-18, but it was too late to stop Winchester from falling to their fifth consecutive defeat against the London side. Although coach Andrew Fields saw positives in the defeat. I, mean, I hate losing, but the lads' effort was immense. We had a lot of changes from last week due to injuries, unavailabilities and the like, and uh, it was a hell of a performance. Just got to keep pushing on. Um, Campbell Ettinger, the second row, he's 36, but I think the next eldest player out there today is 27, and then the rest are around 22, 23. So just keep that lot together. That's all from us. Back to the studio. And now over to Features with Lauren Clark. It's Lewis Carroll's 184th birthday and to celebrate, we're taking a trip to Wonderland. But no trip to Wonderland would be complete without a tea party. So Montana Myers and Letty Buxton are here to take us to the best tea shops in Winchester. As we make our way down the busy high street, we find Chococo, an exciting place filled to the brim with chocolate and cakes, the perfect things to complement tea time and top up on that chocolate fix. Here at Chococo, we have tried the wonderful winter fairy tale tea. This vibrant interior is perfect to escape that winter chill and the wide selection of cakes just screams, eat me. The only problem is we became curiouser and curiouser over their range of hot chocolates. Next time, we will definitely have the Dominican Republic white. This is only one of our top three. For more, visit winnell.co.uk. Ah! Now in Wonderland, they had to be careful what they ate and drank, in case it made them very big or very small. But don't worry. These juice recipes won't change your size, and they're full of healthy fruits and vegetables. Chop all the fruits and vegetables, peel and dice the ginger, juice all of the ingredients together, pour into glasses and enjoy. Chop the apples, kiwi and the lime, Juice the fruit with the kale. 
serve over ice for a refreshing drink. Phew, that was close. Being small has its disadvantages, so we've got some creepy children's movies to take you back to when you were little and hiding behind the sofa. We asked you, what are your top creepy children's films that you watched as a child? Yes, and I think the answer will surprise you, Victoria. The first one on the list is Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Well, that's a classic. Yeah, the child catcher was really scary, if not the appearance. The imagery, at imagery, the very yes. least. No child wants to know that there's this creepy man out there that's trying to capture you. <laughs> the second on the list really, really surprised me. Muppet Treasure Island. Muppet Treasure Island? Yeah. I mean, of all the films, this is, like, I know that these are supposed to be children's films, but this is very much a children's <laughs> film. <laughs> I feel like uh, there are so many other, like, Jim Henson films. His imagery is weird, but the Muppets, <laughs> the Muppets. <laughs> Kermit the Frog! Of all the ones on the list, this is the one that did not give me nightmares as a child. Well, but the number one on the list Yep, did. Coraline. Coraline. Now, I was definitely old enough to not be scared by children's films when this came out, and I 100% got terrified by this film. It's like everything about the stop motion freaks me out. <laughs> Even the opening credits are creepy. Yeah. Everything about it is just... It's nightmare fuel. Right, so this was only three of what we had on the list. For our full features package, please visit our website. Glad that was over. Now, ever wondered how Alice achieved those luscious locks and even maintained them when falling through the rabbit hole? Ellie McDonald has the answer. So I'm going to show you my recommended products for getting Alice in Wonderland inspired curls. Start with some dry shampoo like this one from Batiste. Spray it onto your hair to add some texture. It smells great but can leave your hair looking a bit grey, so make sure you brush out any excess. Then use a plumping mousse like this one from VO5. It adds great volume to your curls, but too much can make your hair a bit crispy, so make sure you spread it evenly throughout your locks. Section your hair into layers using some clips before getting your curling wand. Make sure your curling wand has a clip so you can securely curl your hair from root to tip. Take small sections of your hair and curl each one of your layers. When you get to the top section, spray some hairspray like this one from Got To Be onto your roots and then back home to add even more volume. This hairspray is great for this as it helps to hold the extra volume, but don't spray too much or it'll make your hair look too hard when you want it to be looking soft. Once all of your hair is curled, spray a bit more of the hairspray to hold the curls in place all day. The final look gives you beautiful curls just like Alice. Now can you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? Well that depends a great deal on where you want to get to. But for the full versions of these videos and more, go to winnell.co.uk. Goodbye. Cerebral palsy, a neurological condition that affects an estimated one in every 400 people in the UK according to the NHS. One family who are all too familiar with the disorder are now trying to raise money and awareness to help cure the condition. Alice Rose went to find out more. For six-year-old Isabel from Rockley, her life was changed at the age of 15 months when she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy, affecting her ability to walk. We can't do things that normal families do. We always have to think about how it's going to affect Isabel, how she's going to feel in a situation, is it safe to take her to the situation, if I take her is she going to cope. As she's getting older and older and older the differences are becoming much more vast. I need to let her think that she can achieve anything in life. If I limit her expectations she'll only meet those expectations. I have to make her think that she can do anything in life and we've tried to do that but the reality is life is very hard and life is really hard for her because as a parent I have to watch her struggle every day to do things that other children find so easy and it, it kills you as a parent to have to see her struggle. Her family are looking to raise around £50,000 to enable her to travel to America to have the surgery that she needs. I mean, it would literally... It would change her life. You know, this is, this is the chance. You know, this is the only procedure that is available that makes a permanent difference to children like Isabel with cerebral palsy. You know, she lives in pain, so life will be hard for the first two years because we need intensive physio. So the money that we're trying to raise is not only for the operation, it's for the intensive physio afterwards. 
Are you excited, excited about things you can do after you've had your operation? What are you looking forward to doing? Uh, I'm looking forward to getting oh. a dog. Getting a dog? Oh, cool. What type of dog? An assistant dog. Oh, cool. That would be cool. So this is a chance for Isabel to have some individuality, to have some separation from me, to have some freedom and to be like every other six-year-old girl. The family hope that more money will be raised at the upcoming fundraising event where Isabel will be the belle of the ball. Alice Rose, Winchester News Online. That's all from us tonight. For more award-winning news, features and sport, visit winall.co.uk. Goodbye.